Alright, so what we're going to be looking at here is a practical example of our in-between blend shape function. Okay, and we're also going to have a look at how the check topology function works as well. So I've got a basic candle flame here, and we're going to go ahead and animate this using blend shapes. And the reason that we might want to do this is that it allows us to have full control over each stage of the flame's movement. And that's normally going to be a necessity if the art director or the director wants a specific look for the object. So that's kind of like a prime example of why this would be used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on my target shapes here just to show you each of the blend shapes that I modelled. What I've got here are 24 shapes and something to be aware of is that my base shape is the exact same as my end shape. Okay, so they match up and that's just to allow for a very smooth transition back into the candle flame. Okay, so it deforms from our full flame, it gets blown to one side and then deforms back to the original flame. And before we go ahead and actually apply the blend shape, I want you to make note of a couple of the blend shapes here. I've got my vert count up here, and if I was to go ahead and select this blend shape, you'll notice that I have 130 vertices. If I go ahead and select this one, you'll notice that I have 146. And that's because I decided that I needed a little bit more detail for this shape. And because we're dealing with an amorphous object such as a candle flame, it's okay for us to use this procedure. You wouldn't use this when you're dealing with facial shapes because you're going to end up with errors. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select each of the shapes in order and then select my base mesh. We're going to go up to Create Deformers, Blend Shape, and I'm going to make sure that I have my in-between checked. And we're going to leave Check Topology on because I want to show you what happens when you leave it on and there's a mesh or a target shape that doesn't match up in the vert count. So if I hit create, nothing's going to happen. Maya's going to kick out an error telling us that there's no deformable object selected. That's because Maya knows that in our selection there's a target mesh or a base mesh where the topology doesn't match. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to untick that and hit create again and you'll notice that we now have our blend shape. If I expand out the blend shape window here I'm going to hide my target shapes. I'm going to zoom into our flame here, and as I move the slider, you can see the flame deforming. Now I'm doing that a lot slower than it would be, just to show you what each of the shapes look like. And you can always spend a little bit more time than I did for this very quick demonstration, and actually add in more shapes to get a far more fluid look. However, you can get away with using this amount of shapes and a little bit of motion blur for a render, and it will look fine. So just to show you what I mean by this, I'm going to go ahead and key this over two seconds. And if we just run this back, we can see what it looks like. So that's what it looks like in our viewport. I'm going to stop that there and rewind it. I actually have a render that I did of this just to show you what the final effect looks like using a basic candle shader, or a basic flame shader, sorry, should I say. And if I press play, with a little bit of motion blur and a little bit of glow, you can see that we get a very effective candle Alright, so that now concludes this workshop on understanding blend shapes. Hopefully it was useful, and thanks very much for listening.